What if everything you see around you, every atom, every star, every breath, isn't the foundation of reality, but a byproduct of something much deeper? What if consciousness doesn't arise from matter, but instead gives rise to it? Max Planck, the father of quantum theory, once said something that still stuns physicists and mystics alike. I regard consciousness as fundamental. I regard matter as derivative from consciousness. This is not a poetic metaphor. This is one of the greatest scientific minds of the 20th century proposing a radical idea that the universe is not built from particles, but from mind itself. In this video, we'll explore how Planck's insights challenge the very fabric of materialist science and point toward a universal field of consciousness that may be the matrix behind all of reality. Max Planck is known today as the reluctant revolutionary of physics. In 1900, he introduced the idea of the quantum, a discrete packet of energy, which shattered classical assumptions and laid the foundation for quantum mechanics. His work eventually earned him the Nobel Prize and launched a century of scientific breakthroughs. Yet beneath his rigorous equations and empirical methods, Planck harbored a deep metaphysical intuition. He wasn't just a physicist, he was a philosopher of reality. In an era when materialism dominated the sciences, Planck stood apart. While most physicists believed that consciousness was merely a byproduct of brain activity, an epiphenomenon, Planck believed the opposite, that mind is primary and matter is secondary. In a universe of probabilities, particles and paradoxes, it was consciousness, he believed, that provided coherence and meaning. Planck's quote, often repeated but rarely understood, cuts to the heart of the mystery. I regard consciousness as fundamental. I regard matter as derivative from consciousness. In other words, the building blocks of the universe aren't physical, they are experiential. What we call matter is simply the manifestation of something more essential, awareness. From this view, the observer is not just a passive spectator of the cosmos, but an active participant in its unfolding. Planck wasn't alone in this belief. His contemporary, Erwin Schrödinger, also suggested that consciousness is a singular field, not something chopped up between individuals. But Planck's position was unique because it came from someone deeply embedded in the foundations of empirical science. For him, consciousness wasn't something that emerged from neurons. It was the source code from which even space and time were written. To grasp Planck's view, we must rethink our assumptions about reality itself. The material world, the things we touch, measure, and analyze, may not be the base layer of existence. Instead, it may be a projection a symbolic representation emerging from a deeper field of intelligence. Just as a video game's images are rendered by unseen code, our physical universe may be rendered by consciousness. Planck saw this not as mysticism, but as scientific truth. If all matter is composed of energy, and all energy exists in quantum states, probabilistic, fluctuating, non-deterministic, then there must be something that collapses this infinite potential into a single experience. For Planck, that something was conscious awareness. Reality exists because it is perceived. It is not the brain that creates the experience, it is experience that gives rise to the illusion of the brain. Mainstream science is built on the assumption that reality is objective and external, that the universe exists independently of us, and that consciousness somehow emerges from matter as a biological fluke. But Planck's view flips this on its head. If consciousness is primary, then materialism collapses under its own assumptions. This doesn't mean science is wrong. It means science has been looking through the wrong end of the telescope. From Planck's perspective, what we call the external world is a projection within a field of consciousness. The implications are staggering. It means the universe is more like a mind than a machine. It means that death, separation, and randomness may all be illusions of perception, not laws of reality and it opens the door for reconciling ancient spiritual insights with the cutting edge of quantum physics. If matter arises from consciousness, whose consciousness is it? Planck suggested that the field from which matter arises is not personal, it is universal. This echoes the mystical traditions across time. The Brahman of Vedanta, the Ein Sof of Kabbalah, the Tao, the One. 
Planck's universal mind is not a bearded god on a throne, it is the formless intelligence that animates all form. Everything we experience, thoughts, bodies, planets, is a ripple in this boundless ocean of awareness. Our individual minds are like waves on its surface. And while we appear separate, we are fundamentally expressions of the same source. This idea wasn't just philosophy to Planck, it was the logical conclusion of quantum theory. Because if nothing can exist independently of observation, then everything must be entangled within a single field of knowing. So why should any of this matter to you today? Because understanding consciousness as fundamental changes everything. It means you are not a random speck in a dead universe. You are a conscious expression of the very intelligence that holds the cosmos together. It means your thoughts, your awareness, your ability to witness beauty or feel love. These are not side effects. They are foundational phenomena more real than stars. Planck's view gives science a soul again. It invites us to explore reality not just with instruments but with intuition, reflection and reverence. It also bridges the great divide between science and spirituality, suggesting that what the mystic sees in meditation and what the physicist finds in quantum equations are two languages describing the same truth. That mind is the matrix of matter. Max Planck may have launched the quantum revolution, but he also left behind a deeper, more radical idea, one that challenges the core of materialist thinking and opens the gates to a conscious cosmos. I regard matter as derivative from consciousness. That statement is not just scientific, it's spiritual. It reminds us that behind every atom is intention, behind every equation is awareness, and behind every moment of your life is the silent presence of universal mind. If this resonated with you, share your reflections in the comments. Has science gone far enough in exploring consciousness? Or is Planck's vision still ahead of its time? Subscribe if you're ready to keep exploring the hidden intelligence that connects us all. Because the universe isn't just out there, it's in here and it's thinking through you.